brauset Winde, schäume mehr, mir im Herzen braust es mehr. Schlage Unglückswetter ein, Mut will trotzig oben sein. Schwillt die Flut ins Himmelshaus, keine Anker wirft er aus. Schmettern Blitze holen tief, blickt sein freies auch nicht schief. Freudig schießt er auf Gefahr, wie auf Raub der Sonne nah. Stürzt mit Wangen frisch und rot, kühn hinein in tiefsten Tod. Froh für Recht und Vaterland, fasst das Eisen seinen Hand. Für das Laster feig und feil wird sein Mond ein Donnerkeil. Seine Losung heißt Gott, darum ist die Welt ihm Spott. Freiheit, klingt sein Feldgeschrei, darum hasst er Tyrannei. O oh, wie selig ist der Mann, der in Wahrheit sagen kann, Du, Gefahr, bist meine Braut, treue du, mir angetraut. O oh, wie selig ist der Mann, der in Wahrheit sagen kann, Mut, du bist mir Sonnenschein, Mut, du bist mir edler Wein. Sonnenschein behalt sein Licht, Saft der Reben altet nicht, So erlischt nicht kühner Mut, So erbleicht nicht Heldenblut. Wird die Welt, die Welt zu scheitern gehen, Mut bleibt fest und ruhig stehen. Ja, fällt selbst der Himmel ein, Mut wird Gott mit Götteren sein. Das war ein Poem von Ernst Moritz Arndt, who is another one of my uh, favorite poets. I wrote this little script for Erkenbrand at the time, so it was written in Dutch, um, and I will read it to you in English, so bear with me as I read from Dutch to uh, English. Ernst Moritz Arndt was a German poet, historian and author, most well known for the Was ist des Deutschen Vaterland song, which became a patriotic song sung on many occasions, especially the 1848 revolution, the 1870 unification of Germany, and a popular song during both world wars. It was a part of the liberal nationalist movement of the mid-19th century, who was, which was mainly represented by the students of the Burschenschaften. Liberal was in this time something, uh, something else than what it means today. Arndt was especially focused on opposing feudalism and uh, serfdom. He considered all Germans to be equals because they were all part of the same Volk. And in which hierarchy is important, but no German should be a slave or property of another German. He argued against the feudal case so well in the, his book Geschichte der Leibeigenschaft in Puma und Rügen that he managed to convince the Swedish king to abolish serfdom in Pomerania, which was at the time part of the Swedish uh, the Swedish Kingdom, Northern Germany. Arndt is also well known for his ultra-nationalism, which he mainly expressed in anti-French sentiments. This is because he was born in 1769 and he died in 1860. This means that all of his rejection of everything that was French mainly came from the revolutionary and Napoleonic wars, which had been fought for a very large part on German territory. The Holy Roman Empire, which had been the political representation of Germany for more than a, a millennium, was dismantled in 1806 by Napoleon. The French would also occupy large parts of northern Germany and of the Netherlands and Belgium, which at the time was part of the Netherlands and part of Austria. These war traumas caused in Arndt a deep rejection of the French, who were busily dismantling German, German sovereignty and German institutions. And, and attacking German culture, in his opinion. At the same time, Arndt did have a certain admiration for the liberal ideas that the French carried with them throughout Europe on their conquests. Until the period of the terror under, under Robespierre, he had in fact supported the revolution. This is a story you will often see. Uh, Joseph de Meister was also a supporter of the revolution up until the terror, and then later turned against it and became an arch-conservative. Arndt turned made it his life's work to take these liberal ideas and give them a German character and to also make sure that Germany would never again be humiliated like it was in 1806. For this reason he would be a lifelong supporter of the Großdeutschland ideal. And this would be in the scene of the Großdeutsche Losung, 
meaning a unification of all German speaking territories that who that were at one point the Holy Roman Empire. So this would not be the modern Germany nor even Imperial Germany, but it would also include Austria, the Netherlands, uh, Alsace Lorraine, possibly even Switzerland. But simply all German speaking, all Germanic nations. Not to be one should not forget that the the Dutch were part of the Holy Roman Empire right up until it was dismantled. And although we were one of the larger kingdoms of it at the time, historically you should not see it as any different than, for example, the Kingdom of Bavaria. They had their own dialect as well, and Dutch really is a d dialect of German. The idea that Dutch is a completely separate identity from German is something that is a product of this post-Second World War. Our very first constitution was written by a man called Thorbecke, in which he used the concept of Dietz. Dietz is being the original term for Deutsch, which would include the Flemish and Dutch. And the Dutch are made up of three different tribes of Germans, the Franks, the Saxons and the Frisians. That's what our national ethnogenesis comes from. Um, so, yeah, to see Dutch separate from... Germany is a very modern concept. Our very na na national anthem asks, are we not of German blood? Anyway. Arndt was in the Napoleonic period the, a teacher in the University of Greifswald, where he published many pamphlets and poems against the French. He was in fact so po popular that when he published a pamphlet in 1806, in reaction to the dismantling of the Holy Roman Empire, in which he called for a, Volks uh, a people's revolution against the French, published in the first edition of Geist der Zeit, he was actually, many people heeded the call and took up arms and fought the French, which forced Arndt to flee to Sweden to uh, escape the French persecution. He only returned after the heroic death of Ferdinand von Schiel, and his Freikorps in the Battle of Stralsund. Von Schiel had been one, one of the many uh, people heeding the call of Arndt to fight a guerrilla war against the French, and being a Prussian officer, he had deserted his post and formed a volunteer Freikorps to start a guerrilla war. The French managed to corner him in Stralsund and defeat him. Von Schiel died on the battlefield and would become a symbol of the German resistance to the French occupier. Arndt's songs were even sung by the Prussian soldiers who would defeat Napoleon at Waterloo. In service of the Prussian government, Arndt uh, created a patriotic furore in 1812 and 1814 with his poems, but after the war he would rapidly fall out of favor at the Prussian court because of his liberal and anti-feudal ideas. The Carlsbad Decrees by von Metternich uh, prohibited Arndt to have a professorship. He would only return to teaching in 1848 at the University of Greifswald as a rector. Arndt, during the patriotic pan-German revolt of 1848, would take place in the Diet of Frankfurt, which would try to negotiate a, uni a unification of Germany. And he was one of the deputies who proposed to give the imperial crown to Frederick Wilhelm IV of Prussia. When Frederick refused, Arndt uh, retreated from the Diet, which, 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 which would eventually fail. The unification of Germany would, for this reason, only occur in 1807, 1870, under the Iron Fist of Bismarck, ten years after Arndt's death. He would never see a united Germany, nor would his liberal ideas ever be implemented in Germany. The Junker system and serfdom continued to exist up until the 1930s and the Second World War. Arndt's songs and cultural influence are, were so prominent in German culture to, up until the Second World War. His anti-French songs and pamphlets were reused during the Franco-Prussian War and the First and Second World Wars. Besides Goethe and Schiller, Arndt is one of the most influential and well-known authors of, in, of the German language. But these days he is often ignored by self-hating Germans because of his ultra-nationalist ideas. For this reason he has been somewhat forgotten outside of nationalist circles, but his influence on the language is so great that everyone who studies German 
will eventually come into contact with Ernst Moritz Arndt. Das soll es 